Between Crosby and Wellsworth, there's a viaduct which connects the rails over the river. It was considered by many train spotters as the perfect train spotting location, with its breathtaking views either snowing, spring, or even at night. Historians or railway fans can tell you about its history, like the time Gordon lost his dome on the viaduct, the 1985 repair that almost brought the entire railway to a standstill. However, there's one story that's so unknown and so disturbing that one in 20 engines or people knew about it and wouldn't dare to share it. This is the story of the Ghost Train of the Gap. In 1900, the railway was booming in Sodor. The Victorian era, or the 19th century, may be coming to an end, but it's the beginning of a new century, the 20th century. However, there was one problem. The NWR wasn't actually existing on Sodor yet, but consisted of three railways. The S&M, or the Sodor Mainland Railway, W&S, or the Wellsworth and Sudbury Railway, and the TK&E, or the Timoth, Nefford, and Ellsbridge Railway. Between them was a river which split the TK&E from the other two. It was known as the Gap by some people since it split the railway from being one. Around 1910, three railway companies decided to come together into a single railway, which will be known as the NWR. Soon, the three-year work on the viaduct began, once the trackers had been laid down toward the cliffs. However, there was another problem. All of the engines were busy with their jobs like pulling passengers, goods, or assisting with other projects on the line. So instead, the company hired a tank engine from the GWR to assist the workings of the viaduct. However, it had no original tank engine. The engine was an 1895 prototype of the GWR Holden 101 tank engine, which can be familiar with the Hornby train set. The difference is it had a large boiler to hold more water compared to the newer models and an enclosed cab. Despite this, the engine was proven to be hardworking and progress was going well for the viaduct. Until one night on 29th of June, 1913. On that night, a night shift foreman was watching over workmen near the entrance to the viaduct when he noticed something. There seemed to be steam in the distance and puffing sounds. He pulled out his binoculars and looked through them. What he saw was the engine puffing towards the viaduct and he was carrying some coaches. At first he was confused. What's he doing? Until he noticed something else. The engine was going faster and faster without stopping. Fearing the inedible, he blew his whistle and cried, RUNAWAY TRAIN! Alerting the other workers on both sides of the viaduct. Many of them ran away from the bridge as they jumped off the tracks, stood back and watched. The engine came roaring past, screaming with his whistle blowing and ear piercing sounds, so loud that some of the workers even lost their hearing. The coaches that the tank engine were pulling looked like they were filled with passengers. The engine crashed into the work barriers and fell down into the river below. There was a loud crash before a mighty explosion could be heard as the boiler exploded. The workers ran down the embankment to the crash site to check for any survivors in case of some miracle. But what they saw was shocking. It could only be seen as a picture of hell. The carriages were burning due to the explosion. Bodies of the victims laid around the scene, some even decapitated due to the huge force they must have experienced during the crash. The engine remained in pieces due to the blast, almost in knuckles along with its crew. Once the deaths were counted, 56 people had died, including the crew of the tank engine. It was considered by some to be the most deadliest and worst train wreck in UK history, if not the entire world. Not even other train accidents from past and future such as the Harrow and Wellstone, Quinton Shale, or even the Armageddon in 1899 could possibly beat it for not only the deadliest of crashes and the amount of lives lost, but also the mystery and conspiracy that would follow. And the original engine that was meant to take them to Wellsworth had broken down, and since the tank engine was the only engine available, he took it, and due to being 15 minutes late when it departed, it was traveling faster to make up for lost time. Investigators also interviewed the designers of the prototype engine, who mentioned that the engine had a huge problem where rarely, its brakes failed due to its design being too heavy, which is why it wasn't adopted and after the recent ordeal, the Holden 101 tank engines were scaled down compared to the tank engine. The reason why it was given to the NWR during the construction was, as long as the engine was traveling at a slower pace either around the worksite or pulling a slow goods train, it was considered worthy enough to help with construction. Soon the official inquiry concluded that the failure of the accident was due to the design of the engine's braking power, plus the unfortunate timing of being in the wrong place at the wrong time for pulling the train when the original engine failed. Despite this, many workers refused to believe this, because whenever something was not right before an accident, it can lead to a decades-old mystery. Soon many workers were saying that the engine was insane, which is why he never talked and it unfortunately was given a train of passengers, which gave them an excuse to travel faster like an express. Others say that the accident was a suicide made to look like an accident. 
However, the most common theory is that the engine was possessed by the devil himself. It could explain why he was acting very strange and antisocial lately, but there were some more pointers during the accident. The first thing is while the workers were running away, they could hear the engine screaming like a lost soul, like a demon. Some workers who stayed back and witnessed the accident reported the engine had fiery red eyes and devil teeth. At first, the theorists took no notice due to the other workers thinking that their comrades must have been illusioned or traumatized by the accident. However, the theory quickly escalated when the foreman who spotted the engine had suffered a horrifying death. While he was walking to a station at Wellsworth on his way home, he slipped and accidentally fell into the path of a moving train, killing him within seconds. Many workers tell everyone that it wasn't an accident but a suicide. They say that while he was looking through his binoculars, he spotted the engine's fiery demon red eyes and he committed suicide as he couldn't get enough of it, or worse, possessed to do so. Whenever it was by accident, insanity, suicide, or possessed, or something unexplainable, it was still a mystery. After the accident, the three companies had run out of money due to the paying the families or loved ones of the victims, replacing or repairing the work equipment in the bottom of the viaduct for damage due to the explosion. Luckily, one of the chairmen was friends with the First Lord of the Admiralty, none other than Winston Churchill, who saw the island as an outpost in the direction of Ireland and gave the NWR enough money to not just finish the railway, but to get the viaduct finished by 1914. Unfortunately, despite how deadly the crash was, it was overshadowed by the outbreak of the Second Gulf War in 1913, and thus was forgotten about it. The Rev. W. Audrey was planning to tell the story in the beginning of the Ghost Train story and tramway engines, but it was cut due to fears that he could give the readers nightmares. Although there's a TV show covering it during the 70s, it only aired once due to how disturbing it was with only one reviewer, whose review was in the Soto Sons newspapers quoted, A shocking but great as a campfire horror story. Might tell it to my engine over on the NWR. However, a creepy poster appeared around 2015 that tells the story of the engine called Timothy, who crashed in revenge for his controller while possessed by demons to kill his younger brother Thomas. While the story helped the accident gain a bit of attention, it was however not true, because in the story, the engine was an E2 prototype, and not a GWR Holden. He was scrapped when all the E2 kind were scrapped, and he was also a father figure to Thomas. Even to an extent that when Thomas was told of the story, he was raging mad and swore that he wanted to kill the author of the story for insulting his brother. But back to the story, many historians however don't think the accident actually happened. There are no photos of the engine itself, nor the accident areas besides a painting of it, or even legalized death certificates of the victims. However, there is one piece of evidence that was a manifest on the train the engine pulled at the time. It was the same original engine and passenger numbers. There was a rumor from the inquiry notes of the accident, but it was lost forever. But, it's once said that every year on the day of the accident, it runs again as a warning to others, punching into the gap, screaming like a lost soul.